Welcome back everyone to another series of Mike on the Move. I am Mike and today I am sharing my trip to Northern California to check out the Redwood National Park. As a native Californian and now in my mid thirties, I have never checked out the Redwood National Forest. And during this pandemic, they say California is for the Californians. And for that reason, I decided to take two full days and two full nights to check out the Redwood National Park. Now, the Redwood National and State Park System actually is a combination of three different parks. And these three different parks were created in a way to save the Redwoods during the gold rush and the logging time period. Almost all the Redwoods were actually cut down across California. And so these three park systems actually was a way to save the Redwoods. These, these three park systems include Jeredia Smith, Del Norte, and Perry Creek State Park. So my overall experience of checking out the park, well, nothing but amazing. But my only downfall, really, is that I only spent two days and two nights. You know, this park, the National Redwood Forest, includes three different parks, um, over 50 miles of coastal land, over 100,000 acres of redwood, protected redwood forest. It's a lot to see. And I did, I did at least the highlights in two days. So I highly recommend, if you can, do four to five days. You know, check out the park at ease because it's a lot to check out here, right? Some of these trees are over a thousand years old. So when you walk in the park, it's sort of walking back in time. And so everybody should check that out. I recommend that anybody, no matter what age you are, whether you're five years old or 95 years old, check out this park. So before we get started, make sure to subscribe to Mike on the Move so I can keep you posted on my latest videos and adventures. Let's get this video started. Making our way north from Eureka, we officially started our day here at Thomas H. Cultural Visitor Center. This is the best way to learn about the park adventures and activities and to best determine how to plan your day talking one-on-one -on -one with park rangers. Next, we made our way to Prairie Creek Park, which is one of the three parks that make up the Redwood Forest. This park is a must-see as it features highlights like Trillium Falls, Gold Bluffs Beach, the Fern Canyon, and of course the Big Tree. Lots of parking, restrooms, and picnic areas, and more importantly, park rangers with lots of important info to share about the park activities and guidance. First, we want to check out the Big Redwood Tree. Starting at the park headquarters in Prairie Creek, this is an easy but incredibly scenic loop that takes you to check out the big tree via the Prairie Creek Trail. This is a loop trail. This loop is a perfect introduction to the park as it passes through some of the park's most scenic groves and it also has a nice variety of different environments which highlights both upland and lowland redwoods. Note that the trail is extremely popular by Prairie Creek standards. At peak times, you might pass a group every minute on the trail. However, I am traveling during COVID-19 times. This timeline I'm actually traveling in is August 2020, and you hardly see any people crossing me in my path as I experience this trail. Now, the only real drawback to this trail is the traffic noise. As you can see, this trail goes right across Drury Parkway. So after over a mile and a half hike, you will be arriving at the Big Tree. So here it is, the Big Tree. So how old is the Big Tree? Park rangers say the height and girth of the Big Tree suggests that this tree might be one of the oldest in the forest. Like us, every tree has a unique story. What does the big tree towering complicated canopy tell us about its past? Well, look through the viewing tubes featured by the park to tell us more clues about its age. It is suggested that the age of the big tree is 1,500 years old and the 13th largest and oldest coastal redwood. Up next, we're on our way to check out the Fern Canyon. To get there, you must drive on a dirt road for a scenic drive for over six miles until you reach the Gold Bluffs Beach Kiosk. 
There you'll pay $8 for a day use pass, and then you'll drive another three miles through several small streams like this here. And not to worry, you can drive through these streams with any size car. But note, during the rainy months, you should check with a park ranger. Once you reach your parking lot, there you officially start your walk into the Fur Canyon Trailhead. It's about another quarter mile until you hit the actual canyon. After a quick walk, you are officially entering the Fern Canyon. Now the Fern Canyon is a one mile trail through the canyon. And during the summer months, foot bridges are installed over the creeks to make this trail easier and drier to walk through. Now imagine walking through a narrow canyon where all the walls are completely covered by luxurious ferns and mosses and dripping with moisture. This is a Fern Canyon, and this is why the director of Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg, describes a Fern Canyon as an unforgettable natural wonder, and the reason why he chose to film his second movie, Jurassic Park, The Lost World, here. Note that the Fern Canyon is an extremely popular place to visit when checking out the Redwood Forest. But I am traveling during COVID-19 pandemic time in August. And so I decided to climb this tree to get the best view of the canyon, which check out these photos, extremely lush, green, moist. The only problem I have now here is getting down. Let's see if I can get down safely. Safely, I will get down safely here. And here I go, and I made it safely. Hello. Also, a magical feature to note is the drip drip of water coming down the vertical fern walls into the canyon stream. And note that you actually can hike to the fern canyon one way five miles from the Perry Creek headquarters. Newton Drury Parkway is a must add to your Redwood Forest visit. This is a detour that goes straight through the heart of Perry Creek State Park and it's considered a scenic alternative to the 101. It's a 10 mile drive through the old growth Redwood Forest. And along the way, you'll gain access to numerous Redwood trailheads, including the Big Tree. Some of the most spectacular scenery is along this one ride. Everywhere you look, there is something special to see. Well worth adding this to your coastal drive and remember, this parkway hooks right back up to the 101. And if you want to add some more fun to your adventures as you make your way up through the Redwood Forest, check out the Trees of Mystery with Pa Bunyan and his ox babe. Another must-see stop is the Tour Through Tree in Klamath. Now, you really should drive through this tree here in Klamath. It's a quick stop. We did it in about 15 minutes to take a few photos and enjoy the quirky experience of driving through a living tree. Um, to enter is about five bucks and you must squeeze yourself slowly driving into the tree by turning your mirrors in. A really cool experience as you make your way through the redwood forest. Next up, I like to feature Stout Grove, which is part of Jaredia Smith Park. Stout Grove runs along the Smith River, which you can access driving through Powell Land Hill Road. This grove is one of the most famous across the entire river forest because it has one of the most scenic stand of redwoods. Now the grove is only one mile, it's a one mile loop, and has lots of big trees, but really they have a number of fallen giants, just like the one right here. All right everyone, I'm at Stout Grove here at the Redwood National Forest, and I'm now walking on top of a fallen redwood. Look at this. Now I can't offer any real stats on this tree, but I was able to conduct a hard count 
And based on my own personal hard count, I estimate this tree to be over 200 feet tall. Look at this. If you're able to, the best time to check out the grove is any time between 4 and 5 o'clock where the sun is able to beam through the grove and really highlight the foliage where it becomes sort of backlit with rich, brilliant golds and greens. Up next, we are checking out Howland Hill Road, which is a featured scenic drive part of Daradaya Smith Park. This is an unpaved road, which allows you to drive through the forest about four miles long one way. Just note that the west side of Howland Hill Road is closed as of uh, August 2020 and is planned to be reopened sometime in the early part of 2021. out the Redwood National Park is to check out the scenic drive which is called Howland Hill Road. Great experience to drive through the woods. All right people so I'm checking out the Redwood National Park scenic style in my car. So you actually can drive a few miles through an area called Howland Hill Road and you can just drive into the park just like this and it's really like this unpaved area of the park, right? It feels like you're actually driving through the forest. What I did is just came out of the car and just start to walk around because I really wanted to embrace this sort of majestic environment of what is a national park here. Alright, I really hope you enjoyed my video as it helps you plan out your next trip to the Redwood National Forest. Now, before you go, please make sure to subscribe to Mike on the Move so I can keep you posted my latest videos and adventures. See you all soon.